There were flames everywhere. The fire licked at the curtains and ate away in the carpet, reducing everything in the home to ash. The fire had been caused by a sharp frying pan and had spread quickly throughout the house. There was nothing left of the home of Ron and Mary Hall. The fire had destroyed everything in its path. Everything. Except for one painting. The painting of a crying boy. Hello, I'm Nemo and welcome to episode 9 already of season 1 of Certainly Strange. The thing I'm going to talk about today, uh, I've actually read a lot about on the internet. But I've never really heard of a podcaster or a YouTuber discussing it. But I've always found it very interesting. I believe it was like the first case that I ever read about a haunting uh, or, a, or a cursed object or a haunted object. Um, and a lot of people believed it. I believe back in the day uh, a lot of people talked about it and everyone was like, oh my god. Uh, this is real. Not to spoil too much about the story, but it is about the crying boy paintings and how people thought, or I guess still think, that these paintings are haunted or cursed or whatever way you want to look at it. Um, I really like it because it's about art and it's also about ghosts and curses and I really liked researching it because at the time there were a lot of newspapers who took this story quite seriously um, but at the same time there were just so many blogs on the internet repeating the same stories and it's all speculation without really knowing you know what is true and what is not and well before I spoil too much about the story already uh, let's just get started also quick side note uh, there are some Italian names in the episode and I just want to apologize beforehand for any mispronunciations um, so right Let's begin. Peter Hall, the brother of the man who had just lost his house in the fire, was, ironically enough, a firefighter. After his brother had told him about the strange painting and how it had not burned, he said that he had attended several house fires where everything had been destroyed and that there was only one thing left completely untouched in each of these homes, and that was the picture of a crying boy. Of course, this story spread like wildfire, and on September 4th, 1985, the British tabloid The Sun published an article titled Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy Picture. In the article, the son speaks about all these strange fires and how these paintings seem to miraculously survive the flames. And then the article claims that the fires were actually caused by these crying boy paintings. Ellen Wilkinson, a fire station officer, had reportedly looked as many as 50 fires where a painting of a crying boy was found unharmed from the flames. After this article, The Sun released a whole collection of fires that were related to these paintings. For example, a woman in Surrey had bought a crying boy painting and lost her house in a fire six months afterwards. A pizza parlour in Norfolk was destroyed in a fire, including all the paintings they had hanging on the wall, except for a crying boy painting. Two sisters in Kilburn had a fire in both their homes after purchasing a crying boy painting. The rumour that owning a crying boy painting meant that your house would go up in flames quickly changed when people also started blaming the pictures for any misfortune they had suffered. A man had purchased a crying boy painting and when he broke his leg, people told him that, naturally, it was because of the painting. In the eyes of the public, the paintings really did seem cursed. As the popularity of the cursed boy paintings grew, people started to wonder about the story behind the crying boy paintings. One blog claimed that the paintings were haunted by the spirits of orphans from World War II and another blog swore that the paintings were cursed by Romani. In truth, The Crying Boy was a series of around 65 paintings of crying boys by an Italian painter named Giovanni Bragolin, also known as Bruno Armadio. 
The paintings became extremely popular, and eventually over 50,000 versions of these images were sold. A retired schoolmaster from Devon named George Mallory discovered that Giovanni Bragolin was actually a Spanish postcard artist named Franchot Seville, who lived in Madrid. He was old and childless, and so he had adopted a boy named Don Bonillo. Don's parents had died in a fire, which was of course tragic, but there were rumours that the fire was started by Don himself. A local priest went to the old painter, warning him about the boy, calling him a devil child. Seville did not want to believe it at first, but then, one day, his studio was burned down. Suspecting that it was Don, Seville kicked him out, abandoning him to the street once again. Years later, in 1967, Don had a car accident and died in a fiery explosion. That was the supposed story. Many blogs, especially horror blogs, have copied versions of this story all over the internet, claiming it to be the true story behind the crying boy paintings. The blog posts then go on to describe how the spirit of Don still haunts the paintings that his adopted father made, who abandoned him, and that he sets houses on fire as some sort of revenge. The earliest version of the story I could find was from the Tumblr user Tea and Skeletons, from which the story was copied onto the Creepypasta wiki page. Journalist Dr. David Clark started researching the legend behind the crying boy paintings for the newspaper The Fortean Times. He could find no evidence of the existence of either George Mallory, Franchot Seville or Don Bonillo. The story behind the crying boy paintings therefore seems pure sensationalist fiction, made to scare people looking into the crying boy legend rather than actually explaining it. In an effort to actually explain the curse and why a crying boy painting was always left unharmed by the fire, Chief Divisional Officer of the South Yorkshire Fire Service, Mick Riley, revealed that the picture of the crying boy was always printed on high-density cardboard, which is very difficult to burn. Besides that, during a fire, the cord holding up the painting would snap from the heat, causing the painting to fall down on the floor with a face down. This would have thus protected the painting from any harm. This still does not explain why so many people who have possessed a crying boy painting have lost their homes in a fire. Of course, it could just be coincidence, but it is certainly strange. So that was the story of the crying boy paintings. Or was it? Um, I I must admit, when I was researching this story uh, for this episode, it drove me absolutely mad how there was just this one story that was just copied and pasted by any blog I could find. Like, the exact same story, word for word. They didn't even change the the sentences, they just copied it and and claimed it to be their own work. And um, they're all swearing that it is true, and then I find that the story is probably just made up by some Tumblr user. Um, it is quite frustrating how the internet can can uh, work like that. I suppose mankind have always done that. I mean, that is that is kind of what what folklore is, right? That is how folklore is born: just hearing a story and copying it, and um, that's how the, the dominoes fall. Yeah. Um, The curse of the crying boy paintings, is it real? Well, I remember when it was quite big uh, on the internet, people swore by it. You know, you can say, like, oh, it's a coincidence that so many people's houses burned down who owned a crying boy painting. But, um, you know, there were 50,000 copies made of the original 65 crying boy paintings and probably because of also the popularity of the story more crying boy paintings were made because they they knew that it would sell so i think just a lot of people own it i don't know how often houses burn down but like yeah um it could be coincidence but then again the fact that that a crying boy painting just doesn't burn 
Yes, it is because of the it was printed on high density cardboard and the the painting falls flat on its face down on the ground when it when there's fire. But doesn't that also happen with other paintings? And it like is the crime boy painting the only painting printed on on high, on high density cardboard? I don't believe that. So it's it's quite w weird that that is the specific painting that always remains unharmed. So it, I think it's weird, but I don't necessarily think that it is cursed or haunted. It is just like one of those weird things. Uh, it is certainly strange, as we we like to say in this podcast. Um, do you know any any other haunted objects? Maybe that would be a very interesting subject uh, for for another episode, like a, a certain haunted object. Please do uh, tell me in like the comments or message me on social media or, or send a message on my website. Uh, both are Dr. Nemo's Cabinet of Curiosities. And thank you for listening to this episode of Certainly Strange, a podcast about the unexplainable. Everything about the podcast and my other projects can be found on my website Dr. Nemo's Cabinet of Curiosities.com. There you can also find the transcript of the episode and the sources I used in my research. And once again, thanks for listening.